UFC fighter Sean Strickland cannot stop talking about China, but Chinese UFC fighter Song Ya Dong just responded. China's biggest exports, plastic and COVID. Hey champ, I respect your skills as a fighter, but we should be talking facts, not baseless stereotypes. As athletes, we ought to focus on what we know best and avoid making unfounded comments. Let's set a good example, all right? All right, guys, uh, this tweet, whole Twitter spat or back and forth kind of went viral, so we want to talk about are Sean Strickland's comments about China, are they really offensive or is he just a blue collar fighter so we should just not take anything that he says seriously? Anyway, guys, we are going to get into our quick takes on it. Of course, the comment section, the ever present comment section. So make sure you like, subscribe and turn on your notifications. But you know what? Something that is going viral right now. Smala sauce, guys. Made in America, but with Chinese flavoring. It's very delicious. Check it out. Foodie and chef approved. I feel like nowadays, Andrew, nobody knows whether to take pure fighters whose job it is to beat people's heads in and also get their heads beat in, mm -hmm. uh, you know, bare fist to skull, Andrew. But it agitated the world, right? Yeah, I think that we're at this point where fighters are so famous and we give them so much attention because at the end of the day, we want these people to be stars because it's more entertaining to watch them fight. Like, it's more entertaining to watch two famous people fight rather than two no-names fight, period. Right, that, it almost adds some, like, WWE yeah. elements, but instead of it being choreographed, they're actually beating yeah. each other up, right? But, again, I put fighters, even in a different category, but close to comedians, where maybe the things they say should not be fully taken seriously. But I don't know, because it depends on how you take it. You're like, oh, I'm offended by Sean Strickland, he keeps making Chinese jokes, or you're just like, dude... He literally takes punches to the face for a living, so who cares? Those are the two main outlooks, but let's talk about it because I think there is a debate. Um, also, some people are saying that Sung Ya Dong was making a PR statement that may have been sent to him by, you know, handlers. You or mean whatever. maybe he didn't type that? Yeah, I don't think that he did. No, but he could. I, he he could have translated it. It could be an official PRC response to it that is channeled through. I mean. It could be anything, I right? mean, but it seemed like a good response, regardless who wrote it, or if he wrote it, or if it was translated. It was a educated response. Right. I think it speaks on a couple things. I think it speaks on how people feel about China right now, how you can twist semi-true things. There's not no truth to what he said in terms of China does import so many goods into America that are like plastic based, right? But also a lot of heavy machinery. So I don't know why he, did, he didn't say metal as well. Mm -hmm. And then obviously COVID came from China, but so do... A trillion other things. Why do you focus on those two things, right? Um, so many good and bad things come out of China. It's like a gigantic place. Nobody understands anything about it. It's so, you know, what's so weird, and it's just going to be true for the next, like, 50 years, Andrew, is that China's going to be America's biggest trading partner. Mm -hmm. It's going to be one of the biggest countries where people immigrate from into America, yeah. and nobody will know anything about it. And people will continuously make fun of it, too. Yeah, and they will continuously, like... Be like, oh, I love these cheap Chinese products from Amazon, but I'll basically diss Chinese things yeah. whenever I get a chance. And the tough thing is, I know that there is a separation between the people who come from China and China. I understand that. We all know conceptually, if you make people take a test, they know that there's a difference. But you can't help that when somebody is making fun of your country or talking down on it or your motherland, that it kind of feels like it's a proxy to talk down on you. Whether or not they mean it that way, that's how it, it feels. It easily could domino an effect into demeaning your humanity, yeah. which can yeah. lead you to getting treated worse in the yeah. workplace, worse on the sidewalk, public spheres, blah, 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 can, blah, blah. Can blah. I go out on a limb and say that, first of all, we're going to play some other clips of Sean Strickland uh, being interviewed by a... Chinese American girl, uh, but he's like making a lot of Chinese jokes. He's just having fun. He really is not caring what he's saying. I mean, they're very baseline stereotypes. Yeah, yeah, but she's uh, she's kind of inviting it too. But I guess like, even with that said, I don't know if Sean Strickland hates Chinese people. I don't think there's any evidence of that, but he sure does not give a F about what he's saying. And with this amount of fame and this platform, he's still never gonna give a F. You right. know what I mean? And like we said, man, there's a lot of material to twist as much as we say this, you know, uh, like there's a saying in China, it takes two hands to clap. And obviously with all the negative press that China's getting right now, some of those are stories rooted in truth. Yeah, but you but, I mean? but but of course, everybody's going to just look at the aspects that they want to look but at. But we all know Sean Strickland, he's going to get even in hotter water if he said those things, same things about Africa or an African country.
He's Anybody, not. Even Russia, a country that like probably arguably yeah. logically does way worse. Things I would just him. like to see someone like Sean Strickland, if he's going to make fun of China, which, okay, the, a joke is a joke. Sure. You got a joke on everybody. Joke on every other country or every other continent. Do it. And, and, or is it also Chinese people's responsibility to not just lay down and take it? Anyway, guys, listen, I'm, I think there's valid arguments on all sides and there's going to be some good perspectives that even conflict with each other. Let's run the clips from a seemingly endless amount of Chinese jokes that he made with reporter Helen Yi. I'm trying to get this uh, Chinese money. So, you know, if there's any big Chinese sponsors, what, what's it called? Uh, the phone company, Helen, you hook me up. What am I saying? Hello. Meow. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like I should already start. How do you say work harder, child? You and Smell scrapping? What's going on with you? I mean, I'm just swimming, you know, a little bit. Olympics or some shit, right? Trying to qualify for Olympic trials. Qualify for the Olympics. You're gonna make China proud, super proud. Okay, well, fucking, I'm as happy not eating dogs. <laughs> My dad did, but for <laughs> true story. When you're in China, you don't got no food, man. You know, <laughs> meat is meat, all right. Always great to see you, Helen. I thought since you got married, you start wearing more clothes to the gym. I smell. I thought we had to talk about this. You got to discipline it, bro. Make my God, you're probably an Izzy fan, aren't you? Well, he, hey, he told the Sifu. Okay, he told Sifu he's gonna knock you out for China. Who the fuck is Sifu? It means master. Oh fuck, I have no master, fucking Izzy. I mean, of course Izzy has a master. He's fucking China's little slut. The little Cantonese. Oh shit, so. let's do it. Lay ho. Oh, I do like I do like the lay hoes. <laughs> All right, we're going away from the Cantonese guys. My name's not fucking Izzy, okay? <laughs> The fucking Chinese, you guys. I keep telling you, you can never trust the Chinese. In the middle of the night, cleaning my fucking guns, thinking about overthrowing the government, thinking about all the ones who wronged me. All, all natural here. I mean, you know, you are what, Chinese? Yeah. yeah. We all know about Chinese and the steroids, so I mean, come on now. You got bigger fucking arms than me, Helen, come on. Oh my God. You know, I would like to say this is the most Chinese thing I've ever eaten, but that would be a lie. <laughs> Oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. I've ate a lot. Of, I've ate a lot of gross things, a lot of gross things, and this is going on top. Oh, I'm done. I'm done. You win. Help. You you enjoy that? Is that something you like to eat? Oh yeah, it's really good. It's good for you yeah. too. I understand. In, in China, sometimes it's hard to get food, but this is America, you guys. This is a Topic thrust this way. This is the land of the free. I eat McDonald's and fucking cheeseburgers. This is, this is what poor people eat, all right? I am past that now. Knocked out. You love me when I win. You love me when I offend Helen. You love me when I insult Smo. And I love you for that, you fucking deranged bastards. Oh my goodness. Andrew, let's get into the comments section. Somebody said, classless, but then again, I expect nothing less. He was a legit white supremacist. He's admitted it himself on various podcasts. Oh. It's, it's, yeah, no, from back in the day. Oh, okay. He, I, he, I didn't know he's this. He's like, you know, I'm growing out of that, and, you know, my girls helped me a lot, but uh, I was raised in, you know, Inland Empire, and that, that was my background. Raised in Corona, man. That There's a lot of diversity in L.A., so, but a lot of MMA could, fighters come from it could be Inland the Empire. Yeah, but you know, it could be for the family. So I didn't know that. I am going to count that against him. Somebody huh. said, man, it's just okay now because China's or Asian countries in general are getting stronger. So that gives more of a people a license to go at it. That, there is yeah, some truth to that. It is true because China is supposed to take over or dominate. That's why it feels more okay. It almost feels like to some people that they're punching up for the joke. They do feel that. Some people can rationalize, especially blue collar people in America, can rationalize that making fun of China is actually punching up at this point. Because they're like, my manufacturing jobs are the ones that got shipped over to China. So if they took my job, I'm punching up, at least on the trend, at yeah. least in my micro fish bowl, and maybe. Um, Why's it gotta be so complicated? Somebody said right after this, he went on a podcast with Theo Vaughn and cried about his childhood. He also said that if he was in prison doing a life sentence, he possibly would take advantage of Asian men because they are more delicate, soft, and make better lady boys. Yeah. That is a crazy thing. I saw that clip. He did say that on yeah. Theo Vaughn's podcast. Yeah, you know what? You know what, <laughs> song? Song Yadong, you just gotta fight him, man. You gotta fight him. You gotta fight him over this. 
Um, somebody said, people <laughs> mad that Sean said the truth and the evidence is there and obvious. People react with emotions instead of thinking critically. Of course, some people said the bit about plastic is true, though. So actually, uh, China is the world's largest exporter of plastics, but that is also because they buy far more than any other country in the world make everything. Heavy metal machinery, light plastic what? consumer but goods, uh, industrial fabrics and fabrication, everything. But since when was Sean Strickland Mr. Environmental? Yeah. You know what I mean? Since when did he care about who's making all the plastics? Yeah. Everybody everybody needs stuff. I don't love that there's so many so much plastic in the world that there's microplastics in your water and stuff like that. I don't love that idea, but also I'm like people keep buying stuff. Somebody so said let's be honest, it. Sean Strickland and his fan base probably complain about recycling solar and EVs and then want to blame plastic on China. Exactly. Well, they also probably don't believe in COVID, but then would blame COVID on China to be honest right, too. I right, mean, that's right. just like uh the human Desire to just get all your points. Listen, and I don't not think Sean any nuanced anything. I don't think Sean Strickland is a statesman. I don't think he's a philosopher. I don't think he's a scholar or even a politician. He's a fighter, and so, but we give fighters a platform. Somebody said, "I'm sure his phone, most of the stuff he owns and uses, are made in China." This reminds me of when Kenyon Martin tried to go after Jeremy Lin. Obviously. He was saying Jeremy Lin shouldn't have braids. Jeremy Lin pointed out that Kenya Martin had Chinese tattoos. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just think that... David, you know, David, David. It's just it, like, it, even just like Chinese tattoos and just like Chinese jokes, it's almost like these Chinese things got so disconnected from the culture. It's almost like somebody will be sitting there eating orange chicken and go, yep, all the Chinese eat dog over there. This, love this American food though, but it's just like orange chicken and lo mein, but it's almost like been so disconnected over the years, you know? It's like, it's like really, really hard to describe, I guess, the Westerns, uh, society's ability to like be sensitive around Chinese things, would you say? Yeah, it just kind of sucks that it feels like as an Asian in America, and you like these American things, you like American comedians and com uh, American fighters and American athletes, but when they say something about being Asian that you find even kind of offensive, then you feel bad if you boycott them for it because they're like, everybody's going to look at you and be like, oh, stop being so sensitive. They're just right. an athlete. They're just this. And then as an Asian, you just take all these little jabs at you and you're just like, you're expected to take it. You and know? it's almost like that your whole life to be yeah. honest. Yeah, it is. It's it literally is. like that. Like every idol that you have, there's like a 40% chance they're going to say something off. Yeah, you know? yeah, like yeah. And it's like... I feel conflicted the same way. I, it's not a much, I'm not a Sean Strickland fan, so for this one, I don't really care. I'm not paying attention to him. I don't follow him, and I don't ever need to see him fight, and I don't yeah. need to ever support him. I also don't think he's like an evil man, but I'm like, no, I just don't F with this guy. But there's been a lot of comedians who have made Asian jokes where I was like, dang, man, I still think you're funny, you know? But I'm not going to lie. Uh, what's his name? Who's the fat guy that did said the- uh, Shane Gillis? Shane Gillis- Oh, so on a pure humor level, is a killer. No. Like he doesn't respect Asians that much. Truly, in his heart, I believe that. But in terms of his humor muscles, they're very strong. Like I, I did watch his comedy special, his latest one. So aside from what he did in the beginning, so that, but he's dude, funny. So dude, I, it goes, everybody's so conflicted, a, and especially as an Asian guy, it's like a whole other thing. I will say this, and I'm gonna keep it so real right now. I feel like pretty Asian women or pretty Chinese women, they almost get viewed as like a product of China that's owned by an American company. You know how like people are cool that the iPhones are assembled over there, right? That's how but, people but, view it. But Chinese guys, we get treated like we're actually a Chinese brand. Yeah. Like yeah, we're not yeah. an iPhone that's assembled over by a Foxconn mm -hmm. factory in China. We're Huawei ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Also... Yeah, man. I mean, that, that's a, hey, listen, guys. Whether you like it to hear it or not, like that's a that's how it's spot on. That is like, definitely how it's for, perceived for how it plays out. I'm not saying yeah. it's right or wrong. And so it's kind of whack. So I think the people who are um, the most, you know, ambivalent about this, feeling the most mixed feelings, are Asian guys. Yeah, who are I'm into this lie. stuff. I like Sean Strickland's interviews. I like, I don't like what he says. But the fact that he has zero filter from his like uh, mind to like vocal cords I guess, is pretty interesting. It's I, very American. I guess honest. instead of trying to police essentially a just a guy who a brawler, a a, a fighter, a professional. Literally, he said he was on his path to becoming a domestic terrorist before he focused on fighting. Like but he see, literally said see, that that was his life path. Yeah, and this is the thing. So we give these people platforms. So we either 
We either do not care what they say, whether he says he was about to be a domestic terrorist, whether he says he used to be a white supremacist, whether he says stuff about Asians, whether he says stuff about black people, if he ever does. We either have to say, I don't care what Sean Strickland says. He is this guy. He is, un he is not a role model. Or you have to do the things to try to police it. You know what right. I mean? I mean, that's why it's I either shouted, or. That's either why or. you got to shout out to Song Yadong because he was the one who came out and said it. Yeah, and, he, and obviously he can, he can match up because he's also a fighter. You know what I mean? Like, if I tweet that to Sean Strickland, it doesn't matter. Right. In it's fact, another signed will, UFC fighter who has a... I'll get made fun of for tweeting at him. <laughs> Um, somebody just said, America's greatest export, racism. And somebody said, and some folk wonder why white people get labeled as racist as their stereotype. That's a good point. Hey, white people. Hey, just like stereotypes come from somewhere, there's stereotypes sticking around for a while. Yeah. Um, somebody said, America's biggest fast uh, exports are fast food and weapons. Somebody said, racist terrorists, school shooters, lowest IQ. Of course, a lot of comments about school shootings. Um, it is all, almost impossible to find class in the modern UFC. Somebody said it's not just UFC, it's everything. But it, the truth is, Andrew, in one championship, which is based in Singapore, you are not allowed to say anything like this. Yeah, well, it's not all about the theatrics and saying controversial stuff just to drum up uh, tickets and viewerships for a fight. You know, it's more about just striking in that league. Yeah, I remember when Khabib uh, beat Conor McGregor, he was like, oh man, he's allowed to say everything about me. I disagree yeah. with it. Because obviously there was some religious beef uh, when yeah. he was talking about I, I mean, I think it depends on how big of a fan you were with Sean Strickland beforehand. If you were a big fan, you're going to cut him a little bit of slack because you're going to be like, oh, well, you know, he's kind of a dumb dude anyways. Or if you're not a fan already and you're only hearing about Sean Strickland because of this, then of course you're going to be like, yo, F this guy. Somebody said... Uh, Sean Strickland just gained every conservative as a fan. And they said, it's funny because when LeBron, because a lot of NBA players, Andrew James Harden as well, they said things in support of China because the NBA and China have a very close relationship. Or They or, told them to shut up and dribble. But then they're like, oh, how come everybody's like cheering Sean Strickland's like complete lack yeah, of Yeah, how come we don't say, Sean, shut up and fight? Just shut up and fight. Shut up and punch. Shut up and kick. Well, I wouldn't say that because in a way... I can't control what people do with free speech, but I do believe that that is one of the things that makes America very unique. But it seems like people are using it for like, to be inflammatory, at least in 2024, a lot more. Ultimately, uh, Andrew, what do you think? I think this, I think Sean Strickland, he represents almost like a hyper bold 10X version of just like an uneducated blue collar person. Because if you think about all the stereotypes that he said, everything from Asian or Chinese guys being like soft and delicate to like all the jokes that he made with uh, Helena Yi, those are all like baseline stereotypes. To be honest, if you guys grew up in a blue collar area like me, you heard that stuff since you were like, maybe like nine years old. Yeah, I'll tell you this, man. I, I overall, just to wrap it up, whether you care about Sean Strickland or not, I just think like in this day and age and for the next decade or so, you better thicken your skin. I'm not saying don't speak up about it, but I'm just saying regardless whether you speak up about this or not, which this is kind of my our way of speaking up about it, I'm still going to acknowledge like we got to have thick skin because people are going to keep saying stuff, whether it's in a joking manner, whether it comes from an uneducated place, an educated place, a comedic place, or a non-comedic place. Or an educated but, like, non-holistic view. That's what that's one thing that's really big in 2024. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, people are educated but purposely blanking out these other counterfacts on purpose. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of comedians that make jokes about China that I want to respond to, but that... I, I don't know, man. I can't like even somebody uh, like Andrew Schultz, like or like uh, Patrick Bid Davis. Yeah. Well, we did we did respond stuff. to it though. We did make videos, and that's why we have this platform because we at least speak up about it. I'm not necessarily saying we're going to protest Sean Strickland. I don't care that much, but I'm just like, yeah, this is my way of responding. I think that you got to like toughen your shell as a turtle, but you also got to toughen your forward engine, yeah. to go forward <laughs> too. Because I'm telling you guys, especially if you are Chinese passing, of course actually Chinese or you actually like have family in mainland China like us it's like it's just gonna be more and more to be honest so it's like it is what it is all right guys well let us know your response down below I plan on making some more jokes about America then I'm gonna make some jokes about America Sean
I mean, you know, listen, guys, it's such an interesting situation. Like we said, even Asians themselves were split. It depends on, like, I guess the geopolitical relationship of their motherland origin, mainland China, maybe your diaspora Chinese, or you're there, there. Anyway, we could make, like, 100 videos about the twists and turns, the, the, the rela relations of, like, each response is going to go into. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Until next time, we're the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace.